How's it going guys? This is Brandon from Walker's Woodworks. Today I'm going to be making a DIY scrap wood drill charging station slash catch all everything else. So uh, if you guys want to stick around, I'll show you how I did it. So like I said, this is mostly all out of scrap wood. I had a piece of three quarter inch plywood laying around that was 12 inches wide and I decided that'd be a good depth for the cabinet to be. So I went ahead and marked out for the top piece. I think I did about 39 inches. You can adjust for whatever wall space you have. Now this is 12 inches wide, so it was actually too wide to cut on my miter saw because I don't have a sliding one. So I just used a circular saw with a straight edge to get a rough cut and then I could square it up on my table saw. So I made sure to leave a little extra. If you don't have a cross cut sled for your table saw, I highly recommend making one or buying one. I use mine more than I ever thought I would. It's really nice to get accurate straight cuts. So here I'm just taking a final measurement for the top. Like I said, you can adjust this for whatever space you have. And I use the same process for the sides and the shelves and all that stuff too. It helped get really straight square cuts using the cross cut sled rather than trying to do it on a miter saw or a circular saw. And then you wanna make sure you label all your pieces so you don't get anything mixed up. I like to use blue tape with a Sharpie and that way you don't have to try to sand off any pen or pencil marks. I found some more scraps and took those to the table saw to rip them down to the size I needed for the shelves and the dividers in the cubbies. Then I got my crosscut sled back out and I'm just cutting the boards for the sides here. And for the sides on mine, I went ahead and made them 24 inches tall. Seemed like a good height for the space that I needed. I'm gonna go ahead and put all my measurements down in the video description so you guys can see what I did personally. But like I said, you can really make it fit any space. This will be the bottom shelf. It's 37 and a half inches wide. You're gonna need two of these as well. This part may vary depending on the impact and drill drivers you have. Uh, mine, I made it four and a quarter inches tall between the bottom of the side and the bottom of the bottom shelf. So. That way there's plenty of room to hang the drill in there with the battery and everything. Once you figure out how big you need your spacers to be, go ahead and rip some plywood down to that width and cut it into 12 inch sections. You're gonna need five of those. These are gonna be the dividers for the cubbies. I did them 12 inches by 12 inches just because it was a good square measurement and that's the depth of the cubby and it seemed like a good size. Realistically, you should not put anything through the table saw that's longer than it is wide, the way I just did, uh, because it could get lodged in there and cause kickback. So don't do that. So these are my dividers. I'm just cutting down to 12 inches, like I said earlier in the video. Quick tip, you can just take the piece you cut and lay it on top and measure up to the blade, not pushing against the blade because you'll make each piece shorter. Ask me how I know. but. Uh, it's a little, little quicker than trying to measure every time. Also, if you get a couple pieces that are the same length you need to cut in half, you just stack them on top of each other like I did here. Also makes it a little faster. I set my impact in there to try to figure out how much spacing I wanted between my dividers. The end one there is just acting like the side of the shelf. I ended up with a spacing measurement of five and three eighths inches on center. What I'm cutting here are the pieces that will attach to your spacers. One is two and a quarter inches for the end. The rest are three and three quarter inches. And then the end one will be 12 inches. Here are all the pieces labeled and laid out so I don't mix anything up. I use pocket hole joinery for mine. I was in a hurry, I wanted to get it done quick. You're more than welcome to use any other type of joinery you like. So I set my Craig jig to three quarter inches because that's how thick the material is I'm using. And be sure to set your bit to that as well and start drilling holes. Obviously you want to go through and mark where you want your holes to be before you do this, but it is a lot of pocket holes. And now you can start assembling. You want to make sure to clamp your pieces all together when you're using pocket holes and pocket screws. You don't want to have any gaps between there and you want a nice tight joint because if you don't, when you start screwing the screw in, it will lift the piece away that you're trying to screw into and cause it to be misaligned. Man, I wish I could really work that fast. That'd be amazing. 
Hopefully you guys are getting all this. I didn't want to make the video super long because it's all pretty straightforward assembly stuff. I will say on this part that I used the spacers I cut for the bottom to space out that bottom shelf. It actually ended up being six and a quarter inches between the two shelves, if you guys are wondering. But if you just start from the top and work your way down and use the spacers that you're going to put in there to space it all out, it should work out just fine. This is that longer 12 inch piece I cut earlier. I just use GRK cabinet screws here um, to go up through the bottom. They're self tapping. You just want to make sure you get them into the dividers, which I almost did not. Then just move down the line, measure in each one, make sure to get equal spacing, make sure they're in the center, and make sure you clamp them when you screw them down. Also make sure you put that smaller one on the end. So using a Mono Tool mini roundover bit, see how it's got that little bearing on there? It allows you to get all the way into the corners. I really love this thing for any type of project like this or trim or anything like that. It just gives a slight roundover and gets rid of that sharp edge. I'll go ahead and leave a link to it and all the other tools that I use down in the video description below. Be sure to check that out. And I just gave it a quick once over with a sanding sponge to get rid of any sharp corners or tear out. For the back of mine, I just used quarter inch plywood I had laying around. Like I said, this whole thing was pretty much made out of scrap wood. I just made sure where they go together, they were on a shelf so it was seamed half and half. That way it would have a little bit of something to grab onto on each side. I wasn't worried about getting it perfect at this point. I actually wanted a little bit hanging over and I'll show you why in just a minute. So I just marked on the backing where the cabinet was going to line up so I knew not to cut past there. I ripped it down to a rough size so like I said I'd have a little bit hanging over the edge. I took some wood glue and I put it along the back of each seam. That way the back would have something to adhere to because I knew I wasn't going to put brad nails all in the middle shelves and on all the spacers. However, I did put it around all the edges as you'll see here. Now you'll see why I left a little bit hanging over. I love to use flush trim bits. This is another Mono tool bit. Basically you just set the depth so the bearing rides on the piece that you want to trace and route around the whole edge and it makes it all nice and flush. So much easier than trying to use a jigsaw or any other saw to flush trim it up or sand it down really fast and very efficient. Except for when you try to freehand between the slots. Kind of mess that part up. Uh, I'd probably advise against that unless you have a lot more steady hands than I do. Uh, maybe clamp a straight edge down or something like that. That way you get a little straighter cut than I got. But it wasn't too bad. For those wondering why I'm using an old router, it was my grandpa's. And it works good. So I'm gonna keep on using it. So I did not think of how I was gonna attach it to the wall before I put the back on. 
So here is some boards I'm gonna cut and put in the cubbies. I would advise doing this before you put the back on, that way you can hide the pocket holes and or maybe use a French cleat system, something like that. But this is the way I thought to do it at the time and it worked out pretty good. Remember how I said clamp all your pieces down when using Craig screws? That's why. However, I obviously couldn't get a clamp in there and it worked out okay. You don't necessarily have to finish it. I just had some spray lacquer, so I figured I'd throw a coat on there just to protect a little bit and uh, bring out the color. Here you can kind of see a little better where those pieces are that I cut to fit in the cubbies. I'm just pre-drilling to put screws through and mount it to the wall. When you work by yourself, you learn to do things a little differently. And obviously you want your shelf level and you can't hold so many things at once. So I just clamped it to the top. To mount it to the wall, I use these three and eighth inch GRK screws. They work really well, they have a star bit and they're also self-tapping. I got them all started in there, that way when I got it up on the wall I wasn't trying to fumble around and find the screws and get them in there and all that stuff because I ended up dropping everything in the shelf on myself. We don't want that. So I just got it up there pretty much where I wanted it, checked for level, put one screw in and then adjusted it as I needed and then just drove them all in. I had a few afterthoughts on this, and this is one of them, where my cord's gonna go for my chargers. So I use a spade bit and drill it up through the bottom. Uh, once you get halfway through, you can put a piece on the other side to prevent blowout, and it'll help pull it through the hole as well. I could not handle how ugly that was. So my buddy Mike Camp gave me the idea to put these little panels over the front so you could never see all the pocket holes. I just put it up there with two brad nails, that way I could just pop it right off and then I could take the shelf down whenever I want. Now the fun part, to fill it with all your toys. Man, it sure feels good to be more organized in the shop, that is for sure. Well, that's about it. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys liked the video. If you did, please like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell up there for when I drop new videos, and I'll see you guys next time.